In the first part of this two-part video, I went through Monckton's responses to my catalogue of his errors, and I'd like to just see how the mistake count now stands. First, the easy ones. Here, Monckton does a U-turn and either denies he said something or completely changes his mind, mostly to the point of agreeing with my rebuttal. So we're not looking at a, a sort of long-term systematic loss of ice in the Arctic. And look at how little correlation there is in that graph between temperature in blue there and CO2 concentration in black. And the glaciers are showing no particular change in 200 years. The only glacier that's declined a little is Gangotri. The only glacier that's declined a little is Gangotri. At the moment, the polar ice caps of Mars are melting. There has been warming noticed on the surface of Jupiter, on one of the moons of Neptune, even on far distant Pluto, all at the same time. And why is this? Because astronauts are taking their 4 by 4s up into space? No. It's because the sun, as we'll see, has been remarkably active. Of course, don't expect Moncton to admit he made a mistake. What he does in these U-turns is add some new claim in the hopes that a debate over the new claim will bury his mistake. So his admission that there is a correlation between CO2 and global temperatures is accompanied by a new and unsupported claim that the data shows it was the temperature rise that came first. If ever Mr. Moncton gets around to providing a source for this claim, citing studies where the repeated analysis of this data covering the Phanerozoic was published, then I'll be happy to check it. But first you have to reconcile your claim that there's no correlation between CO2 and temperatures with your new claim that there is, which one is correct? Or are you now prepared to accept that you were wrong and that my rebuttal was therefore right? You can't continue to argue two completely contradictory beliefs. Similarly, the admission that there's been a 30-year decline in Arctic ice is buried within a claim about the state of the ice in the 1920s and 40s. I'm quite prepared to tackle this one with the help of Ola Johannesson, a very diligent Danish researcher who compiled this graph covering exactly the period Moncton cites. By the way, if Moncton wants to suggest that maybe Johannesson is not a diligent researcher and faked this data as part of a worldwide conspiracy, let me bring in a character witness. You know who it's going to be, don't you? You're right. Johannesson et al., very diligent Danish researcher, but again, before we go on to this claim, Moncton first needs to fess up and tell us whether he's sticking to what he told his audiences, which is that we're not looking at a sort of long-term decline of ice in the Arctic, or whether Arctic ice has certainly declined over the last three decades, which is what he told us in What's Up With That. In an apology to Moncton, who had asked that such criticism should be blocked, the moderator for What's Up With That claimed my rebuttals lack any form of documentation. Uh, I don't know just what sort of documentation What's Up With That would like to see. How about a paper that Moncton cites claiming it says one thing, with big red lines underneath the relevant passage showing it says the complete opposite? How about court transcripts and newspaper articles showing actual quotes and comparing them to Moncton's rendering of the quotes? How about a video showing Moncton actually saying something that he denies saying? How about this long list of documents, including title, author and date, along with the time on the video where the document is cited in rebuttal to Moncton? But no, sycophancy wins over science. I'm a personal admirer of yours, and regret any distress such comments may occasion. Yes, don't upset the Viscount by informing him that these documents say something very different to what he's telling us. They say, far better to pretend they simply don't exist. I never claim Moncton said or wrote something without having a video of him or a document written by him stating it, and I never refute anything without backing it up with documentary evidence, even showing you exactly where to find the evidence in the document. I don't think I could do much more without tying the editors of What's Up With That to a chair and forcing them to look at it. 
Everything is meticulously researched and then checked to ensure it's accurate, and I always correct any errors that are found, either with an annotation or in an errata video. I have a completely open forum for every video on my channel where people can criticize me or the videos to their heart's content. These policies are ones that What's Up With That might like to follow instead of apologizing to Moncton for a critique and making the absurd claim that there's no documentation to back it up. It's no excuse to say this comment about a lack of documentation was directed towards the other Brian, the poster, because he clearly stated that he was summarizing my rebuttals on the forum and he gave my YouTube name. Someone even posted URLs linked to my videos. So my rebuttals could easily have been checked, as well as the documentation supporting them. Even the editor, Anthony Watt, seems completely disinterested in checking any documents that might contradict Moncton. The best choice in dealing with such individuals is to take their claims head on, he tells Moncton, which you've done. Oh, come on, he hasn't taken these claims head on. He's either ignored the documentary evidence, as you have, or denied he said something, or simply changed his claim to conform to the rebuttal. But of course, Moncton is a revered figure among critics of climate science and a frequent commentator on what's up with that, whereas I'm just running this little pony and trap show on YouTube, meticulously documenting evidence that Mr. Moncton and his friends at what's up with that feel quite happy to ignore.